Hi, welcome to my talk about exploiting Clue Field Floor Sense for building low-cost mobile area detectors. So I'm Nils Rotman and these are my colleagues and I hope you will enjoy my talk. So as our title already suggests, we want to detect the mowing area for autonomous lawnmower and we want that by designing a really low-cost sensor uh, which makes Automotive Lomo was really cheap and affordable for any kind of people. So what is the state of the art? The state of the art is a perimeter wire and the perimeter wire gets buried here at the boundary line. This is um, really expensive because you need to um, bury that and often you need a special machine to do that. And so what is then hap what then happens is that there is a current flowing through this perimeter wire and this current can be, or this current induces electromagnetic field, which can be measured by the lawnmower with special sensors. So with the state of the art technology, we need this kind of perimeter wire and also some sensors on the robot. So it's quite an um, expensive sensor system. And what we propose now is an active low cost sensor approach, which kind of uses a clear field flow sense from the lawn. And the idea is to send some light to the grass, which is then, um, or which, where is then a part of it resend or, uh, yeah, resend to uh, as chlorophyll flow sense, which can then be measured. And how this is done exactly, I will discuss now in the next sections. So let's go over the general concept of our sensor approach. So what we are using is the chlorophyll A absorption and the chlorophyll A um, emission spectra. So the chlorophyll A emission uh, absorption spectra is given here in blue and has two peaks, one around 430 nanometers and one around 670 nanometers. And the chlorophyll A emission spectra has uh, one peak and is given here in red. So the one peak is um, around roughly um, at 680 nanometers. So what we're using now, we excitate our clue field floor stands with a consumer LED around 430 nanometers. So this is the yellow line, the consumer LED spectra. And then based on the excitation, we got then a clue field A emission, which is around 680 nanometers. And we then record or register this uh, emission of the chlorophyll flow sense using a simple consumer uh, phototransistor. And this consumer phototransistor is mostly in the near IR spectrum. And we plotted here two uh, different phototransistors, one with this spectrum, uh, with this relative sensitivity, and the other has this relative sensitivity. And as you can see, we have here with the green phototransistor, we got here a problem, since the green phototransistor will also see some uh, light from the LED, and this is not really uh, favorable. So we would prefer to use this phototransistor, even if it's had not a perfect um, sensitivity at our required um, spectrum from the chlorophyll emission. And in addition, we use then a fast pulsing LED to avoid sunlight, uh, sun radiation. So um, to filter then and only see the um, chlorophyll emission from our pulsing LED, um, we can then use simply a bandpass filter. So let's come to the processing step for a uh, um, sensor. So um, let's start by having a look onto our sensor. So as you can see here, this is a phototransistor and here's the LED. And on the back side of our sensor, we got the microprocessor, um, some resistors and so on. And we got here a USB panel, which with which we can then connect our autonomous lawnmower to our sensor or our sensor to our autonomous lawnmower. And the signal paths or the processing steps are the following. We start with the microprocessor. And the microprocessor uses a PWM signal for controlling the LED, 
which is in a current control loop basically and the LED sends then an excitation light to the lawn. So this excitation light is basically um, with a wavelength of uh, 430 nanometers roughly and excitates then the chlorophyll fluorescence. In addition, we have some ambient light sources here, um, namely the sun, which also excitates chlorophyll fluorescence. So what we get back then from the lawn is on the one hand, the excitation response, which we really want to measure. So this is the um, chlorophyll fluorescence induced by our um, LED light. And we got some ambient light reflectance from the sun, which also has IR um, parts in it or near IR parts in it. And we got also the chlorophyll fluorescence response from the sun. But uh, we can distinguish between these two signals because this signal is kind of a DC. It has a really low frequency, roughly around 10 hertz, uh, 10 hertz. And this is much faster. We pulse our LED with roughly um, 35 kilohertz. Hertz. So uh, we record this then with our phototransistor. So we got on the one hand, the fast excitation response. So the fast pulsing excitation, re excitation response and the ambient light reflectance and chlorophyll response from the um, ambient light sources. And this is really with a low frequency. So we what we got or what we measure then for, with a phototransistor is kind of this signal. So with a high um, DC in part and really low um, AC part. And this AC part comes from uh, from the excitation response from our LED. So what we do then to um, get uh, to get to know our signal is we first use a transimpedance amplifier, then forward the signal to an amplifier, and then to a bandpass filter. And this is really the important part: the bandpass filter here, because this frees our signal of our ambient light um, influences. So we get then our nice pulsing signal with these rectangle, um, rectangles back. And this freed signal we then um, send back to our microprocessor where we can um, detect it and say, okay, we got really um, our response or we get really a chlorophyll fluorescence response. So that's the general idea and the general signal pass loop for our sensor. And now have a, let's have a look onto our um, results. And we will evaluate this onto some law. So we evaluated our uh, sensor on a real garden environment by trying to detect the mowing area. So marked here, with these red lines. And as you can see, we got really distinct features for our mowing area classification, uh, which really allows to use the sensor in an autonomous lawnmower setting. Um, how did we get these results? We put our sensor onto a uh, autonomous lawnmower and then drove around uh, the area. Um, you can see here in blue the driving lines. Of course, we detected the um, position of our lawnmower using a positioning system, a real-time positioning system, but this positioning t system has a kind of uh, inaccuracy of roughly 10 centimeter, so that's why it's kind of noisy here. It seems to be noisy. Normally, if we have a really correct positioning system, it would be much smoother. But however, um, we can see we got here really distinct features and this is kind of the take away message. Our sensor works um, such that we can really apply it onto an um, autonomous lawnmower to detect the mowing area. So let's come to the conclusion. We designed an active low cost sensor, which is based on chlorophyll fluorescence. You can see our prototype here on the right side again. So we have here an LED, uh, LED and here a phototransistor. And the idea is to send some light with the LED onto the lawn and get uh, or measure the chlorophyll 
true sense response. We tested our sensor on a real in a real garden environment, and we showed that our sensor is able to robust and precise detect the mowing area, as you can see here. But however, uh, we required to statistically evaluate our sensor in different lawn environments, for example, on really good grass and bad grass and so on. And we would like to compare it also to the state-of-the-art approach with the parameter wire um, to compare how efficiently can a lawnmower uh, mow the lawn with the parameter wire and how efficiently can it mow the lawn with our uh, new sensor. So I thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed my talk. If you like to discuss this in more detail, then feel free to get in touch. Thank you a lot.